I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning, First Baptist Church of Highland Park. Can we give God praise wherever you are? Can we give God the glory that's deserving to him? God, we thank you. God, we praise you. And we give you all glory and we give you all honor. We ask that you bless us even in this place. Even wherever you are, oh God, we ask that you get the glory out of everything that we do, oh God. Have your way even in this moment. Oh God, we need you like never before. Oh God, touch our bodies, oh God. Strengthen us, oh God, for this task. Oh God, to be able to come into your house and uh, give your name all the glory and all the honor. We thank you, oh God, for what you have done and what you have for us in store. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, for how you're going to make a way, oh God. When it doesn't look like there's a way to be made, oh God, you will make a way. Oh God, you make all things new, oh God. So create in us a clean heart and renew in us the right spirit to give your name all the glory and all the honor that is deserving to your name. Have a careful to give your name praise. Bless Pastor Davis and strengthen him even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise by lifting our hands. We give you praise by clapping our hands. We give you praise by lifting our voice. We're going to do that tonight. Even if you're not in the sanctuary, wherever you are, you can make your sanctuary your space. Wherever you are. Oh God, we lift your name on today. Yeah. Come on, everybody, clap your hands right there. Come on. Come on, this is a complete song. Let's sing it together. Let's lift it up to our Jesus. Who is the risen Savior? Who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Psalm 66. You know what it says. Is. Who is God? Who is the Savior? Who is the King of Kings? Hey! 
seconds can we give God praise? Can we clap our hands? Can we lift our voice to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Yes, we celebrated Easter last week, but we celebrate a risen Savior. He's worthy of the glory and he's worthy of the praise. Come on, clap your hands and let's give God praise. Hallelujah. I will praise him for the rest of my days. Yes. Hallelujah, yes. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are glad, and we are rejoicing in it as we come to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth on another Saturday night. We lift up the name of Jesus. We get ready to go to God in prayer. The Bible says that men and women ought always to pray and to pray without ceasing. And so that's the spirit. So if you want to come and kneel at the altar, the altar is certainly available as we lift up concerns in our vessel and we pray for miracles and persons hospitalized and whatever the issues are, there's nothing too hard, nothing too great, nothing too difficult for the God whom we serve. So let's prepare to shower heaven with our prayers, whether you are in person or online. God can hear your prayers, and we stand in the gap. We lift up the family of Alicia Hardy, Clara Myers, Ida Robinson, Stephen Rollins. We pray for other persons who are dealing with health issues. Whatever it is, we know God is indeed able. So let's have a little talk with Jesus, because he can make everything all right. Kidney knee, hip, back, whatever it is, we put it in your hands, God, in the name of Jesus. We lift up concerns in our vessel. Somebody needs a miracle. Praying for a son, a daughter, daughters. Pray for caretakers. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Every concern, finances, family, marriages, job, relationships, whatever it is, God. miracle working God. So good to see Deacon Shirley Harper in the house. We've been lifting her in prayer. We're delighted to see her present in the name of Jesus. Have your way. Have your way God. We love you. 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 Thank you Jesus. Dialysis diabetes, kidney issues, whatever, God, we stand in faith tonight. Touch you. Have your way. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Dr. Renee Austin. You're getting ready to get a big honor this week. And we thank God for that. She's going to come and seal these prayers. Hallelujah, God. Have your way, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let us look to our God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do come before your holy presence, God, to thank you for another day, another chance to just give your name glory, honor, and praise, which you so richly deserve, God. For that, we are just grateful to be in your presence. We thank you for this worship opportunity on the Saturday evening. Lord, we thank you for the First Baptist Church of Highland Park, where we still believe the Bible. We believe it is your holy word. 
by which we try to conduct ourselves, and we thank you for our pastor, Reverend Dr. Henry P. Davis III. We ask that you give him a fresh word for this house tonight, God. Lord God, in Jesus' name, we ask a blessing upon his wife, Dr. Weftonoma Carter Davis, and their children, Lord God, young adult children, Lord, we bless you for them and ask you to just keep them, Lord, bless his entire family, God. Even while he's here doing ministry, watch over his home, God. We thank you. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for all who are assembled here today in the house, and we bless you for those in the global virtual space. We thank you that you trust us with global ministry, and we are able to impact many around the world. For that, God, we give you glory, and we thank you for letting us serve. Master, you heard the names of the bereaved families. We ask you to remember the concerns in our prayer vessel, God. Lord, we know there's so much going on in the world. We pray for that area, the Gaza Strip and the whole Palestinian and Israel, uh, Israeli conflict. God, you can bring peace in the Middle East. Only you can do it, God, and we believe you. We pray for Ukraine and Russia. We lift Haiti. We lift Uganda, Lord God. There are so many needs around the world, and if it is your will, God, use us to help in some area, Lord. Master, in Jesus' name, even right here, we pray for gunshot victims, even the young boy teenager the other day at the Metro. Lord, we just pray that something would be done with all of the gun violence and the carjackings. But Master, we know that you can do all things but fail. So we put our trust in you. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon those who are kneeling at your altar, Lord God. You know what they stand in need of. We just ask you to bless as only you can. Master, we're not saying we did everything right. You know we've done some things that weren't pleasing in your sight. So now, God, we confess before you in the name, Lord Jesus, and ask that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God. Give us another opportunity to try to get it right. We kneel before your holy presence, Master, and we give you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. We believe he died for our sins and that he's making intercession right next to you right now on our behalf. So for that, God, we thank you as well. We thank you for the band and the ushers, the media ministry, greeters, all who help make worship possible. Thank you for our security ministry, God, but we know we're safe in your arms, Lord. And so we bless you. We bless you. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And together, a praying church says amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Your grace and mercy brought me through Living this moment because of you, and I want to thank you and praise you too. Boy, your grace and mercy it brought me through. Austin for your prayer and thank God for each of you who share with us 
at the First Baptist Church of Highland Park, where we are Bible-believing, Christ-centered, and Spirit-led. If you are a first-time guest, we welcome you with the love of Jesus. And if that is the case, you are here for the very first time. You can stand up right now so that we can acknowledge your presence. Anybody who's here, you can only be a first-timer one time. But we welcome back those who are with us tonight. And since you're in such a spirited move, I can see it in your eyes. It's offering time. And we prepare to worship the Lord through our gifts. Our ushers are coming. And, of course, if you need an envelope, uh, they will be ready to serve you. And all you have to do is to acknowledge your need by simply lifting your hand. You see our various ways to give uh, electronically, uh, whether it's through our website, uh, our Givelify app, if you have that, uh, cash app, uh, dollar sign FBC Highland Park. And of course, you can scan the QR code or just simply go out to the ATM and get yourself some cash. You can do all of that. All of those are options that you can utilize tonight in terms of your giving. If you, everybody, if you need an envelope, just let me see it. If you, I'm, I'm going to assume everybody's good, great, and you are ready to give. If you have your giving apparatus, just lift it up. I see one's already walking. Bless now every gift we would give. In Jesus' name, amen. They be, you don't have to worry. Your grandchildren can't beat her. Come on, let's give. All to the glory of God. Come on, band. And then we're going to hear highlights from the hill. That's it. As you give your gift, you're expecting God to do something. I'm, come on, come Psalm on, says, come on, come on, come on. I'm on. looking for a miracle. Expect the impossible. I see the invisible. I feel the invisible. I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I feel the invisible. I see the invisible. God 
Thank you for your gifts of love and faith tonight. We do mention our uh, virtual uh, Bible Institute in the morning at the 9.30 hour. Reverend Dr. Lawrence Hawkins will be leading. Let me thank those persons who came for our CPR training earlier today. More than 50 persons came to be CPR trained today. I want to thank our wellness ministry and, of course, the Nurse Mitchell and all of her team, uh, the Elevation Career Network on Monday night, Crystal Macklin at 6 o'clock, Diversity in the Workplace, and she will be sharing. Uh, also, next week will be the Guiding Ministry is going to have a special program on Tuesday led by our very own Reverend Tracy Stevens, journeying through the grieving uh, season. And so if you're going, no one is immune to grief. And so Reverend Stevens will be sharing with us. And then uh, next, well, next Monday night, the women will be in the building along with the men. Men, we're here every Monday night, but the women will join us on, this, on the 15th. She is called a teaching examination discussion on the women who follow Jesus the Reverend Dr. Cheryl Sanders will be with us from Howard University and senior pastor of the Third Street Church of God, uh, Washington, D.C. Also, we'll start making available tomorrow, we'll have an all-white Mother's Day pancake breakfast. It's open to all, uh, sponsored by the Women's Ministry, and uh, they are utilizing Proverbs 31, 25 through 31 is their uh, anchor. The cost is $20. And so you can, and then we're going to be having a moment where you can record um, Mother's Day tributes. And you'll hear more about that. Uh, they're going to start uh, tr uh, taping tributes on uh, next weekend, Sunday. And I, I think Maddie may have some plans for those who are Saturday night worshipers as well and we'll be uh, in a little over a month we'll join we'll be at Watkins Park for our Faith Strong 5K walk run and so it's going to be an outstanding time uh, that we're going to be sharing and you can get information about that on the website but again we're a little, little over a month away and so you can start getting a little exercise, get on outside, get some fresh air, and uh, as you'll get ready. Last year we had more. We had four persons over the age of 80 who completed a 5K. Four over 80. And so that ought to be a good inspirational challenge for those of us under 80 uh, to be able to come through and again, uh, Sister Galloway's young grandson, he was, he finished, he finished number two, and he was running in Air Jordans. He went, didn't even have running, running shoes on, and, uh, but he's very athletic, and again, you can't, you can't, youth is, youth is youth, Dr. Dr. Warner, there's a whole lot of us would love to go back, amen, but we can't go back. It's nothing but a wonderful memory of yesterday, Eric. Amen. Thank God we got young memories of yesterday. But we certainly thank God for that. And if you're in worship tonight 
and you're celebrating an anniversary, let us salute you. If this weekend or this week is your anniversary, won't you stand up right now? If this is your anniversary, and if you're in our virtual space, uh, we say to you, happy anniversary. This is real exciting because, again, let's deal with this weekend. Any any y'all in service tonight are celebrating a birthday this weekend? Anybody? Anybody this weekend? Because this is going to be an exciting week. We have one of our members, Sister Alberta uh, Latson is celebrating her 95th birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday, Sister Latson. And, and, and I believe Brother Posey, I think your mama's got a birthday today. Amen. So we should give you a shout out as well. Amen. How old does she turn today? She turns 92 today. Amen. So I, I got to shout her out because she, she has blessed our church. Amen. I got to shout her out. And I didn't know she was up to 92. But if you got a birthday this week, I know Dr. Austin, she getting a, she's getting a big honor on her birthday. But come on and stand up, Dr. Austin. You've got a birthday this week. Amen. Anybody else this week? And we say to those in our virtual space, Brother Harold Malloy's got a birthday this week. That's right, Brother Malloy, you got a birthday. Your birthday is Friday. Amen. Come on, give a hot Brother Malloy a great hand. Happy birthday to you. But as excited as I am about the first birth, even more excited I am, Dr. Fontenot, about the second birth. Because once I get the second birth, I got a second win. And if anybody know, you know anything about that second wind, boy, you can run on forever. And especially when you get this second wind, Peter Brown, you can run on forever. And so we thank God for that. We're going to get ready for the word of God. And we got the all-star team of musicians tonight. Amen. We, we got, everybody can play something. Everybody can play something tonight. But we thank God they're going to bless us in their own way. And then we share the gospel message. I don't know about you, but I'm just excited to be in worship. Why, why come to church if you're not excited about being here? I know I'm excited about being here. Come on, let's bless us, Nate, and we get ready for the word of God. Find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry, I'm desperately waiting to be where you are, I'll cross the highway. Test desert, I'll travel near or far for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King. For favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart cry, I'm desperately waiting to be where you are, I'll 
Save those who are in darkness, enlighten and inspire those who are living or trying to live in the light, and allow your light to shine through our lives. Lord, we love you and we adore you. We magnify your name. Satan, we put you on notice tonight. We plead the blood because the blood still works. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's clap those hands if we can. 
We stand, if we can, as we honor the word of the Lord, looking at the 12th chapter of Hebrews. As a, as a young person, when we grew up, we thought that Paul wrote Hebrews, but as we got older and got some theological understanding, we found out that that might not have been the case. But we do know it's an inspired word by God. Hebrews chapter 12. I mentioned Dr. Austin's honor. She's going to be inducted into the Martin Luther King Board of Preachers in Atlanta at Morehouse College. And uh, not only is she being inducted, but also our own Reverend Daquan Quarles, as well as his wife. Uh, they are both being inducted, of course, with some very other uh, very significant luminaries who are also being inducted on Thursday in Atlanta. So we're looking forward to that. It's a high honor and to be at Morehouse for that particular time. And so we certainly give God glory, honor, and praise. Amen. I know your dad would be real happy for you. Amen. I know he would be. I know he'd be very happy. And we thank God for that. Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at verse number 1, New Living Translation. I read beginning 1, read down through 4. Therefore, New Living Translation, since we are surrounded by, a, by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor besides God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. Thus far, the words of God, you may go to your seats around the building. I come back to verse number one as the sense of our launching tonight. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great, such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. I want to talk tonight from the subject, put it down. Put it down, put it down, put it down. I don't know what jumps to your mind as to what is it that is a weight in your life. Is it an addiction, an attitude? Put it down. It, it is, the reason why you want to put it down is because it is not fulfilling. It might give you temporary satisfaction, but it does not give you eternal satisfaction. Put it down. Put it down so it does not hold you down and hold you back. Are you thinking? Are you giving some thought to what, er what is that area? What is that thing that I need to put down? Put it down. Not because you've got the strength, but because God has the strength. Not because you have been successful at every twist and turn, but because God is able, as articulated in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things 
through Christ who strengthens me. Are you thinking? Are you giving a closer look at your life? Because sometimes the biggest problem is not others but ourselves. We allow ego to get in the front seat. The word ego, if I look at it in a way and break it down into an acronym, it is your sense of edging God out, putting God on the sideline, and only calling for God when you think you need him. Problem with that particular discussion is we always need him. And there is no moment in which you don't need him. Because in a moment, uh, aneurysm, heart attack, stray bullet, drunk driver. Matter of fact, the other day, a home in Florida had a battery dropped from outer, outer space that came right through the house. Put it down. You don't know what it's going to be your challenge. Here it is. We are on the semi-east coast, and a simple miles from us in the New York, New Jersey area, and felt through Pennsylvania, was an earthquake. I'm sure it said, it said some said the second, the second quake hit the epicenter was near one of the golf courses of our former president. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna read anything into that. I'm just. I'm just going I'm just suggesting and just sharing, because I do. I do get. I did get persons who are able to connect with me online, and they want to know about these different things. But the reality of it is, you don't know what challenge you're gonna deal with. But whatever it is, what is it that inhibits you? What is it? that slows you down? Are you running with a ball and chain? Put it down. The three areas we're going to look at tonight. Number one, God desires for the believer to reach their maximum potential. He doesn't want you to, to wallow in mediocrity, but he wants you to reach your maximum potential. All of us want to live to that reality, and I could say it this way, that if you could reach your maximum potential without God, then you would think you do not need God. But the songwriter says it this way, Camille, I need him, and I need him every hour. So there's the desire, and God desires for the believer, very important, that we would reach our maximum potential. Secondly, keeping one's eyes on Jesus is the ultimate directive to avoid distractions. Uh, there are going to be distractions, but as the distractions come, I want to make sure that my eyes are focused. And that is, again, that's what Satan wants you to do. Keep your eyes, he wants you to take your eyes off Jesus. Stop reading the word. Stop meditating. Stop coming to worship, but you have to keep your eyes fixed. Here it is, number three. Don't adopt the struggle against sin and its negative consequences. Because once you adopt this idea of a sinful life, you are going to deal with negative consequences. And you can't be surprised. If you're going to live a life and you're going to do whatever you want to do, not following the word of God, you can't be surprised when you're going through challenges. When you know the way, but don't go in that way, that is a problem. Put it down. Let's back up. Let's back up. Let's unpack it so that we can go and enjoy all the things of the evening and Final Four and all of these kind of things. But number one, God desires for the believer to reach their maximum potential. First, number one, typically we spend a lot of times dealing with the A clause of verse one. We're surrounded by such 
a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. We many times will talk about how we have persons in the grandstands cheering for us and wanting our success. But Dick and Larry Harper, we don't look at that second part, the B clause, which says, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before. As a matter of fact, you're almost within that verse, it already is broken down to a message within itself. That we're going to make sure that we strip off every weight that's going to slow us down on this race. As a matter of fact, the Greek word is agon. A-G-O-N, which is also is the root word for the word agony. Because you know that life can be agonizing. You can go through some agonizing things in life that you're going to be challenged by. But the truth of the matter is, no matter what the challenge is, God is able. As we can celebrate that tonight, we got witnesses in this room. We passed the mic around. There would be persons who could quickly stand up and talk about the goodness of God. Put it down. Strip off every weight that slows us down. Matter of fact, the, 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 the imagery of this is a person who is getting ready to run a race, but they're trying to run the race, race wearing a robe, a long, flowing robe. You realize that, matter of fact, when you see persons getting ready for the Olympics this summer and, and sprinters will get to the starting line and they will have as little on as possible because they won't, don't want anything to impede their speed. They want to run fast. And then so now they got these sleek body suits. And matter of fact, not only do they run with them, but also even when you look at those in the, the aquatic, in the pool events, and they swim now, and they, they don't have anything that's going to slow them down. Here's the question tonight. What's slowing you down? What's, what's affecting your life? What is the thing that you need to look at that you need to cast aside and put it down? Strip off every weight that slows down slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. You know, there. see, Satan knows how to come at you. In this room, some temptations could come to some people and they would not phase you at all. But others of us, there are certain temptations that we know we need to avoid. What is it that you're dealing with? What is it that you know? And that's why you got to spend a whole lot of time in prayer. You can't be casual about it. You've got to work toward that end because you want to be successful. And therefore, in order for you to be successful, you've got to work as hard as possible. Coach Hood, you know that when you, as you teach young men, is they're going to be successful, they're going to have to work hard, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Heard Reverend Manuel Williams talking about uh, that he had uh, uh, gotten something in a store and he realized he had not paid for it and he went back. And so I'm thanking God that when you realize, when, you're not going to easily get us tripped up. How many African-American politicians have gotten tripped up with small stuff. I mean, uh, small deals that have tripped them up. And, and, and they can come so easily. You've got to be very, very careful about the temptations that can come your way. I, matter of fact, all of us have got to deal with it. I've had persons come in to me and, and when we, we, because we've had to deal with multi-million dollar contractual deals and persons have come in and said, Reverend, I'll write you a check. I said, you can write me a check if you want me to, want to, but I'm going to endorse it and give it right to the church. 
because I'm, I'm not going to You have anybody to come back to me and talk about, oh, I gave him some money for this decision. No, if you give it to me, I'm going to endorse it right here in front of you, and I'm going to put it right in the offering. And, and I've done it with several persons who come to me because they wanted a, a, some favorable considerations. You've got to be very careful about that. And because the question could be asked later, was it really worth it? And how many of us have gotten involved in small things that ended up wrecking us in the long run? Especially the sin that so easily trips us up. The other thing is, let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Endurance. I was having a conversation last night uh, with a person who wanted to get some advice in terms of marathon running and heard that I'd run a few marathons and what tips can you give me that are going to assist me in my first half marathon? What, what can you share with me? And, I, and again, I poured it out. Let, let the person know all of the particular steps that persons have shared with me. Because you realize God allows people to help you so now you can help somebody else. I'm reading a book that I'm going to end up sharing with our men's ministry, but it's dealing with the very fact of everybody needing a mentor in your life, somebody to be able to mentor you, somebody who's going to be willing to challenge you and not just pat you on the back and tell you you're doing a good job, but every now and then we need to be challenged. All right? That, in, that, that race that is set before us. So God desires for the believer to reach their maximum potential. Second thing, keeping one's eyes on Jesus is the ultimate directive to avoid distractions. Look at verse number two. It's very, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who, who initiated, perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him. He endured the cross disregarding its shame, now he is seated in the place of honor besides God's throne. We talk about Jesus as being not just author but finisher. A whole lot of folk can author, Confucius, Buddha, they authored but they didn't finish. Come on, somebody. There's a whole lot of folk, you can start something, but Jesus not only said, I'm going to start it, but I'm going to finish it. And that's why if you look at the, the, the gospel according to St. John, said, let us make man. The matter of fact, you realize he is not just one who's going to start, but he's also one who is going to finish. And not only does he finish, but now he is seated in the place of honor besides God's throne. And what we are blessed by in this atmosphere, but Jesus said, I'm leaving here, but I'm leaving you with the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit is here. So we can realize, we can celebrate, we can bless the name of the Lord because as we go through life, going back to Hebrews uh, chapter 12, verse 1, we are surrounded by this great cloud, huge cloud of witnesses. And he's seated, endured the cross. We, we were just at the cross last week. Again, we were singing songs. Nate, we were going to the cross thinking about the nails in his hands and the shame that he had to deal with. All of that hanging there between two thieves. They tried to embarrass him. But look at Jesus. The, who, who was going to get the last laugh because he gets up early on Sunday morning with all power in his hand. Stone is rolled away. He endured the cross disregarding its shame, crown of thorns around his head, gambling going on at his feet, nails in his hands and feet, and yet he says, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. So we look at this reality that we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. That's why, that's why, that's why, Every, every one of us, you ought to keep the word of God as close to you as possible. Every car I have has a Bible in it. If you got you, you got to keep the word wherever you go. 
I, it will never be said, I'm, I, I, I keep the word with me no matter where I am. And then, of course, because of phones, you can just have, you can have the Bible on your, you, no one's got an excuse. If I ask you tonight to put your phone up, everybody would have their hand in the air. But, I'm, but I want to make sure that on that phone, you have the word. Because all these other things are going to shift. They're going to change. But I'm, I want to I make sure I keep my eyes on Jesus. Am I helping you tonight? Is this being a blessing? Are you just, just a little, just a closer walk with you, Lord. I, I need for you to speak to me, God. Number three, don't adopt the struggle against sin and its negative consequence. What sin wants you to do is to make it a part of what you do. So you start thinking from your human perspective. Matter of fact, what they, what they discuss in seminary classrooms, Dr. Fontenot and others, is secular humanism. Uh, they, you, you start, you start and, and now we could break that down and we can look at it this way and call it mother wit. There's a whole lot of things that we will talk about, and I was listening to a lecture last night over in Baltimore with Dr. William Watley, but there's a whole lot of things that we put on God that, that do not come from the Word of God. But we look at this particular, I am not going to adopt the struggle against sin, and I'm not going to adopt it because I do not want its negative consequences. All right, where do you get that from, Reverend? Verses 3 and 4. Think of all of the hostility endured from sinful people. Think about, because if you really look at it, all you got to do is look at a person who has decided not to have Jesus in the center of their lives. You know what? Don't tell them. Don't tell them, but just look at them. And you will realize when you look at those persons who had no direction, they have, they have, they have no focus. They are trying to fill the empty spaces of their life. And the bottom line, they're not happy. And, and since they're not happy, they will, they will take their frustration and put it on you. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. say, so think of all the hostility he endured from people. Jesus endured hostility from sinful people. And if you think about what Jesus had to go through, then you won't get weary and give up. How many persons on this life you might feel, I, I, you say, I feel no ways tired. But some of you, quite honestly, you've gotten tired. You've gotten weary. But I've come to give you some good news tonight is that the Lord wants you to make it to your finish. Put it down, put it down, put it down. I don't want you to get weary, and I don't want you to give up. The other thing that I was sharing with the person who was asking about advice, and I said, don't worry about getting to the end. Just take it one step at a time. Vernon Gordon is up there in, in the risers tonight. Vernon and I, we run into each other. He's on the bike. I'm on foot. We always you have a nice chat. And Vernon, has, if, if he tells you how many miles he's ridden on his, in his cycling, it would blow your mind. But the key is just taking it one piece at a time. I'm not going to look at the 100 miles ahead of me. I'm not going to look at the 75, the 50, or the 26.2. But you take it one step at a time. One day at a time. And then it says, as you take it slowly, then you won't become weary and give up. See, you can look down the road and the road looks too long. But if I look down, I don't have to worry about the road up ahead. All I've got to do is take it one step at a time. And as I take it one step at a time, then finally I'm going to get to a point and I'm going to see how much ground I have covered. Somebody's in this house tonight and the Lord has blessed you to cover a lot of ground in life. 
He's, you've gone from one state to another state. You've gone from one job to another job, one opportunity to another opportunity. And you know you didn't get there because of your goodness. You got there because of the grace of God. And matter of fact, the grace was so good that you called it amazing. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But then it says... After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. You've got to let it go and give it to God. What is it that is stopping you? And whatever that is that is stopping you, put it down. I'm putting it down. Matter of fact, I'm not only going to put it down, but I'm going to stomp. I'm going to stomp on it. I'm going to put it down because I'm going to look to the hills from whence comes my help. Because I know my help comes from the Lord. I'm going to put it down because he can make a way out of no way. He can fight your battles. He can save your soul. He can open up blinded eyes. I can run on a little while longer, see what the end is going to be. Don't get weary and don't give up. And the reason I'm not going to give up because God has not given up on me. Do I have a witness tonight? He has not given up on you. I got clapping in my hands. I've got joy in my heart. I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to get weary. And the reason I'm not going to get weary is because I'm going to lean and depend on Jesus. It's too heavy for me, but it's not too heavy for God. Do I have a witness tonight? Do you love him tonight? Has God been good to you? And when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for me, my, 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 my soul got to cry out. Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Put it down. It's already holding you down and holding you back. So you might as well put it down. Come on, let's put those hands together in the joy of the Lord. If you're here tonight and there's something you need to put down, and if that something is filling a wrong space and place in your life, today can be your day to step out and step into that which God wants to do great in my life. You can get saved tonight. How can I get how can I get saved? All you have to do is whisper a prayer, Jesus, I invite you into my heart. I want to be saved. Born again. Live for you. I believe you died for my sins. Got up from the grave. You're coming back again, and I want to be ready when you come. And if you pray that prayer, my brother, my sister, young man, young lady, if you just said that on the inside, but you meant it on the outside, you said it with your lips, but you mean it with your heart. If you said that, today is your day to put it down. I'm going to put it, put that down, and I'm going to pick something else up. And this something else is going to give purpose to my life. It's going to it's going to fulfill my life. It's going to give meaning and purpose to my life. If that's the case for you, all you got to do, stand up, step out, step around, step into your destiny. God loves you. God has a plan for you. Don't miss. He's knocking at the door. You need to let him in. Let him in today. Let him in to stay. Come on. If you're here tonight, come on. Stand up and step around. Our deacon, Deacon Camante Thompson is here. Love the process you. And if you're here online, follow those prompts. Scan the QR code. Call our church. Send us an email. We'll respond even if you put it in the chat online. Come on, come on. Put some words to that name. Praise the Lord. He has done all. He has done all.
marvelous things. Praise the Lord. Hold on, Nate. I, but I mentioned also not only goes you give Christ your life for the first time, but if you're already a Christian and you need a church home, what you waiting on? You come here every week anyway. You might as well make it official. Stop dating us and make it official and say, I'm going to go ahead and make that move tonight. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm going to say yes to the Lord is the best yes you could ever say. I want to make, if you backslid, you can slide back tonight. You can rededicate your life. All right, Nate, pick that back up. Come on, come on. Oh, he has done, done marvelous, marvelous. squatting exercise stand back up amen <laughs> i gave you i gave you a squat did you finish that race yesterday dean you did nine laps so what is nine laps you don't know what it you didn't track it on your watch or phone or something Twelve thousand steps that's good dean that's good dean is getting ready for our 5k He's getting ready. He's getting ready. And so his gym, they were running yesterday. And uh, and so we thank God for they went Allen Pond. But again, thank you. Thank our band for being here. Our ushers, trustees, deacons, ministers, greeters. Uh, certainly, uh, I, is the bookstore open tonight, Marion? No, no bookstore tonight. All right. And so we certainly give God glory, honor, and praise. And even after church, you can still join church. If you tuned in late, you can still give and all of that. Pray for worship services tomorrow. Our men will be right in the East Chapel on Monday night, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, David Nash. He got the time right last week. Amen. The week before that. David Nash came at 8. He thought he was early, and all of, we were walking out. Amen. He thought he was early. He won't do that again. Amen. So he was on time last week. We're going to have a great discussion, brothers, and look forward to you, you meeting us here on Monday night at 7. But again, we, we, we send you out with love, the blessings of God. May God keep you and continue to lean and depend on him. I'm glad to see some of our Sunday folk joining us on Saturday, Latrice and Floyd. Glad to see y'all. Amen. You must have something going on tomorrow. Amen. But I'm glad to see y'all tonight. Amen. So we thank God for that. Dear God, we love you. We adore you. We magnify your name. Now bless us as we leave this place, but never your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, have a great time. Have a great night. Amen. And we'll see you next week.